Welcome back everyone. Last week we talked about fractions and we did a little review. We said that a fraction is a number that shows equal parts of a whole or part of a set of objects. And last week we went around our houses and found different objects, uh, different sets, and we made fractions out of them. And we also talked about fraction families. So let's review that before we move on to our next lesson today. As you can see, I have my fraction street set up just like I did last time. And remember, each one of these families is a whole, but it's broken into different parts. And that's what makes their different names. We have the whole family, the halves, the thirds, and remember one, two, three. It's three parts of one whole. And that's why it's called the thirds family. The fourths family, the fifths family, and the sixth family. Those are our families today. And we also talked about some special names for the numbers in a fraction. So let's pretend I have two thirds, okay? The thirds, there's my thirds, that's the family that I'm talking about right now and two-thirds, so I'm going to pretend that two-thirds of this thirds family is playing a game. The name of the number of people in the family that we're working with is called the numerator. And the name of the family is the denominator. Okay. Now that we've reviewed some of the things from last week, let's start the next part of our fraction study. First, I'm just going to explore this whole piece right here. One whole. I'm just curious. Hmm. Okay. the thirds family. Look at that, it fits perfectly. It's interesting. Okay. I'm going to try the fourths family next. Let's see if I get the same results. Hmm, okay. Very interesting. So I am noticing something special about all these fraction families. And I'm sure you've noticed it too. I notice that when I have two halves, one and two, or three thirds or four fourths and so on, that they are all equal to this one whole circle. Look at it, it fits perfectly right on top, just like that. When fractions are equal like this, we say that they are equivalent. And let me show you what that word looks like. It's a long word. Equivalent, aquas, is the Latin name for it, which means the same as. And as you can see, one whole really is the same as two halves. It fits perfectly right on top. And in our fraction work, there's a special symbol that we use to show that. When two things are the same as one another or equal to, we use this special equivalent sign. It's not like your normal equal sign. It's actually three lines instead of two. And this tells me that this part is equivalent or the same as this whole. Now they both have different last names, remember that. This is the whole family, and this is the halves family. And that's okay, because that's what's going to happen. You're going to notice that most of these equivalent fractions have different names. Now you're probably wondering, Heather, I don't have the box of fractions at my house. I can't do equivalent fractions. 
Oh, but you can. And let me show you how you can do that with things from your own house. Let me move these out of the way. So remember, equivalent. Equivalent. The same as. Let's see if I can find something that's equivalent using some blocks from my house. So my children love playing with their wooden blocks. Now these are pretty heavy, but we play with these all the time. We make castles and ramps for Hot Wheels cars. Sometimes we make all kinds of marble runs and fun things with our blocks. And so what I'm going to show you now is how I can use these blocks from my house to play around with fractions and find some equivalents. I'm going to start with the hole, just like I did with our whole fraction family over here. So I have my whole block. Now I'm going to play around. Let's see if I can fit. Let's start with this guy. Let's see. One. Oh, I know. I can see right here. Look at that. These two blocks are the same as the one whole block. I can fit it right on top, just like I did with my fraction families a minute ago. And when I talk about fractions that are equivalent, I'm going to read it like this. One whole, one out of one piece, is equivalent to two halves. One, two. There's my halves family, just like over here. And there's my whole family just like over here, but I'm using blocks. Is it okay if they're square and rectangles instead of circles? That is totally fine. As long as you can fit them right on top of the whole shape, the whole family, then you know you're good to go. Let's try and see if I can find another one. Uh, let me see. I'll try Let's try these little ones. Let's see one. Two, three, four. Oh my gosh, look at that. It really does fit perfectly. It's the same. Four of these little blocks is the same as one big block. So if I were to read this like a mathematician, I would say one whole block is equivalent to four fourths. One, two, three, four. It's the fourths family, and there are four all together. So one whole is the same as four fourths. I found another equivalent. Now let me slide these off of here. What if you don't have wooden blocks? Well, guess what? You can even use Legos. I can show you that too. Here is my whole Lego. Can you see? I'll hold it up for you. Hi. One whole Lego. And I was digging around in my son's Lego bag and I found these two yellow bricks. And I could see that if I could fit them on top perfectly, just like that. Are they round circles? No, but it doesn't matter because they fit on top of the hole, just like we did a minute ago with the fractions from our fraction box. So we have one whole Lego is equivalent to two Legos, two smaller Legos. So I would say again, one whole is equivalent to two halves. It's like they split the Lego right in half. So that, my friends, is how you can find equivalent fractions. You can use blocks from your house or Lego bricks. You probably could even use food, I bet, to find different equivalents this week for your fraction homework. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to see what equivalent fractions you find this week.